Hey everybody, you know, FFF 3D printing is just never going to be able to make a optically transparent print. Until it did! Hey guys, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and a while back I got myself some transparent ABS and some transparent PLA. They call this natural, and it's you can tell it's a little bit yellow, but the ABS is, is beautifully transparent and optically clear, but... Despite that, both of these filaments did not produce transparent prints. You can see this is the transparent PLA print and, and this is the transparent ABS print. And I printed many other prints. Even at 100% infill, uh, and even after post-processing it with, uh, with ABS, it was simply to vapor smooth it, the print came off cloudy. One of the prints that I made at the time was a lens, just a kind of hemisphere that I cut off. And when I looked at it closely, I realized that there were little bubbles inside of it. And I looked at them under a magnifying glass and I could see that the little bubbles were in perfect little rows and lines, kind of suspended alternating into three dimensions of it, which was super neat to look at. But I theorized at the time that what was happening was that the FFF process, being a process that prints out a little noodle of plastic on top of each other, was trapping air because the extrusions are round, and when you put round next to round, there's a little triangle inside of it, and that it wasn't filling in that space, and was instead trapping air. So even 100% infill, you were getting air trapped inside of there, tiny little air bubbles, not enough really to notice, but enough to prevent a, an attempt at optically transparent prints from being clear. So I wrote it off at the time and I said, FFF prints never gonna be able to do optically clear prints. And then ColorFab posted a blog post about how they were using their HT filament and creating optically clear prints. Now HT filament, HT stands for high temperature and what this stuff is, I don't know. It's definitely not ABS, it's not PLA, it prints at a much higher temperature and it's got a slightly different surface property now that I've held onto it, but apparently it's got a flow to it and it flows into itself and fills in those holes. So I tried it out. I printed a lens, just that little hemisphere again, and once I, I, I knew that I had something when I popped this thing off the build plate and flipped it over and the flat bottom allowed me to see clearly. Now the top had little layer lines in it and would need to be cleaned up, but the bottom, it was so clear that all I could see was the layer lines on the outside of it. And this was super exciting to me. So what I did was I took that print, I sanded it off to get rid of those layer lines. Then I hit it with my heat gun to kind of melt the outside of it a little bit. And that resulted in uh, not a perfect lens because the heat gun's not a perfect way to, to fill in those layer lines. But I could look through it and I could magnify things with it. And it was super cool. I should have done it parabolic if I wanted it to be good, but it was good enough to prove the concept. So the next thing that I made was this cool 3D model, which is a, a, a cube, a dice, with a skull stuck, stuck on the inside of it. And my first attempt at it, here it is, I cut out little holes so that I could put gems in the eyes of the skull, which maybe wasn't the best idea. I think it kind of obfuscates the lens. And you can see, this has been post-processed. I hit this with a little bit of, of XTC smooth on, but you could also use Z epoxy or any number of two-part epoxies that go on transparent. The problem that I found with XTC is you see these little uh, yellow pips on the side? They were painted white and XTC turned them into kind of a yellowish and it also did something to the gems that I don't know what it did. It modified the, the layers a little bit. But overall, it's you can see the skull inside of it and it's better from certain angles than from other angles, but overall, <laughs> It kind of worked and it was super cool. I tried it again and uh, this time I smoothed it out with the heat gun to smooth it out. And unfortunately that caused some significant warping and distorting. And while it is transparent, it's it's warping the view of it. So I, I tried it again and uh, managed to get a really good print this time. This is just the best one of the lot that I had had so far. Now. I noticed while I was printing this that I had made a mistake in my settings, or rather I had made a mistake on my printer. 
I had set it up. Now, keep in mind on the ColorFab website, they say you have to print this hot. So my solution to hot is a enclosure on the top of my 3D printer and a towel that I drape over the front of it to keep that heat in. It's a little bit ghetto, but it gets the job done. However, I had a setting on my 3D printer, which if you have Selfish, you might know under general settings, there's a setting called G-Code Override, which or G-Temp Override, which means basically regardless of what setting you tell the slicer you wanna print at, it's gonna ignore that and print it at the temperatures that you set it out. In other words, I, were, I was not printing these ones at the recommended temperature. The recommended temperature is to print this hot, 250 Celsius, 260 Celsius, somewhere in there. But my override temperatures was setting it to be down to 230. And of course, no fan and enclosure the way that I was supposed to be printed again. And the result was less good. Like I can see bubbles throughout this entire thing. It captured bubbles in here. It just, it was not a good print. So for some reason, this works better printing at lower temperatures. At 230C, it works. At 250, it puts the bubbles back in there. And I can't explain it. Also, I was playing with speed a little bit at this time. And I found this one actually, I slowed it down a lot and it didn't work very well so I cranked it back up to about 800 millimeters uh, uh, per second is it 800 millimeters per second let me check my setting real fast the speed is yeah 800 millimeters per minute sorry I had cranked it down for this one to about 400 millimeters per minute and it just looks awful so I cranked it back up to 800 millimeters and uh, kept the temperatures where it was at thought maybe it was because I had slowed it down printed it again and the result was good but still some bubbles in there. And so I tried it one more time, printed it at 800 millimeters per minute, printed it at 230 millimeter or 230 Celsius with a print with a build plate at only 70 Celsius. And the result was very good. Now this one doesn't look as good, but there were a couple things that I changed on this one. First of all, I didn't use XTC. I used a can of Krylon triple thick crystal clear glaze. And this works as good as XTC as far as I can tell. It's working fantastic. The disadvantage with XTC, I can pick up and hold the print and paint it on there as I'm going, making sure to use gloves as you do because this stuff can be absorbed into your skin and cause problems later. But never mind, you're not going to do that. You're going to use gloves the way that you're supposed to. And I've talked about this in another video. But, um, yeah, I, 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 you can hold it and paint it, whereas with this stuff, you have to set it down or prop it up or find some way to be clever about spraying it on there, and it will stick to the bottom because of that. So you, you have to be clever with it. Uh, nevertheless, it does. this is a much easier way, and so I'm going to start using this. Now, I have a couple of prints here that I want to show you. Uh, this is the print as it comes off the print bed, and you can notice that it's not clear at all. Uh, this is that... Uh, uh, the same print, same settings and everything. And what I've done is I've painted the inside of these and I've cleaned that painting up with a process that I'll talk about in my next video. And then I've sanded this as smooth as I can get. So this is what it looks like before I hit it with the clear coat, which I did not do on this print. This print actually stopped part of the way, but I was testing out the clear coat. I didn't sand this nearly well enough. And you can tell that I didn't sand it, but as the little sanding that I did do in it, on it, as soon as I hit it with the clear coat, it it uh, cleared that right up. It, it doesn't have this smoky appearance that this one does. So as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna finish smoothing this one and painting this one, and then we're gonna spray it and we're gonna spray this one and they're gonna look fantastic. I know they are, they're, they're already cool. So yeah, transparent prints with ColorFab HT are possible, but there are some pitfalls. I also printed a supporter block, which you'll get to see the time lapse for as we uh, go out on this print. But the 3D printing professor, or not 3D printing professor, the 3D printing nerds supporter block is printed out of HT clear. And it was printed in the less uh, uh, ideal settings because I was still experimenting at that part. So it's not nearly as transparent as I would like it to be. But what I discovered with this, and I should have known this, was that the tolerances of this material are way off. 
That is to say, it prints a lot thicker than you expect it to, which, again, I should know, this relies on over-extrusion to work. It, it relies on too much plastic being pumped out so that it can fill in those gaps. But that also means that your, your lines are going to be a little bit wider, and you cannot fix this by decreasing the extrusion multiplier or, or fixing it in, in any way on the extrusion side because you need more plastic. The only way to make completely uh, prints within tolerance with this material is to use, uh, Simplify 3D is the only 3D or only slicer that I know that can do this, but they have under the other setting in the advanced tabs, a horizontal size compensation. Set that to a slightly negative value and it will shrink everything within that, that constraint. And uh, that will allow you to then sand it down a little bit and, and smooth it back up and get it to the right tolerance. Now, how much do you need to shrink it down? Well, it depends on how much you're going to be sanding it and how much you're going to be putting it back up with the uh, with the finishing that you do. But short version is you're going to have to experiment. So getting getting mechanically accurate prints out of this is going to be very difficult and something that's going to require a little bit of trial and error. So while aesthetically this is amazing, uh, mechanically, functionally, it's a little bit difficult to work with. However, I still think it has lots of really cool applications and I've used up all of the samples that I have in these experiments, but I'm definitely getting some more because I want to try doing like uh, uh, dual extrusion prints and see if I can make uh, a, a transparent man or, or something like that. I did the gangsta is dead model with the gangster model with a skeleton inside of it and if i just print that with dual extrusion sand it and finish it i think it could be really cool looking and so i might want to try that so that's a future another one that i want to do is i want to take and put a, a boat in a bottle but the boat is just like the skull is here just a void inside a 100 percent print so that you can see it in there i tried doing the 3d printing nerds um brick with the words embedded inside of it just again a little void inside of it to do it but for some reason it didn't want to play uh, the slicer saw those internal surfaces and just didn't handle them properly so I had to move it to the outside I tried doing it by putting Joel Telling's name on the back of it so that you could see it through it you kind of can but again I was still experimenting with the setting so it's not perfect still there's a lot of potential with XTC HT for making transparent prints. And that to me is super exciting because again, it opens up the possibilities of things that you can do. Now, of course, if you have an SLA printer, this is not a problem. It's never a problem. SLA prints have been transparent from the beginning when you're working with transparent material and you pay a little bit more for that. But I think it's super encouraging that FFF 3D printing now has an option for doing this. And this opens up some possibilities. I'm gonna be able to do some things with this. Now, before I go, I want to say, would you guys like some of these dice? I've got I've got a whole clutch of skull dice that I just don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and give these away to people in the comments. So there will be two winners. That's it. Optically clear prints, totally a possibility. As always, I thank you guys very much for watching. If you would like to get some of these dice, stay tuned. I'll tell you what you need to do at the ending. But as always, safety first. And I'll see you next time. Would you like to win a pair of transparent skull dice? In the description for this video, there's a link to a skip by loading ready run. Watch it and then return here and post a comment cleverly hiding the name of your favorite brand of the product that skip was about. In two weeks, two winners will be chosen. This contest is available to anyone in the world, so enter now.